Sorry, guys. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. So good evening, everyone. Yeah, I'm glad to see a lot of people made money from the COVID. We are excited to be here. I'm glad to be doing this. You know, I've had so much value from trainings in the past couple of um, past couple of weeks that I could not just run away from the opportunity to do this, to give value back to everyone. It's my pleasure to be here doing this. And so before we start, I I, I had to we started to start around this time so that we can cover partic something particular. We're going to go straight. So I discovered that there's really no way um, I can successfully teach this. As in, I don't want to teach for you guys to just hear. I want to teach for you to be able to apply to start seeing results from tomorrow on demo on live accounts. So I want to teach what I'm sure uh, everyone can start to make money from right from tomorrow. So I'm going to start a little from uh, from chat from chat analysis from chat markup, how to mark up your chat. So I'm going to do that very, 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 very briefly. Then we'll go to the main thing. Then we'll go to the main thing. I'm going to share my screen now. Can everybody see my screen? Okay, I don't know how to be on my chat. I want to see my chat instead of this. Yes, we can see your screen. All yes. Right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So let's go to my trading view. Trading View is a free, is a free platform. Of course, you can do the paid version. I'm using the paid version actually. You can use the paid version. Sorry, guys. One minute, please. Okay, let me stop share for a moment. I want to do something on my laptop. Uh, just, a, just a minute, please. Okay, just a moment, sorry. Okay, 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 okay. So now I can share my screen back. So can everyone see my screen now? Can everyone see my screen? Can everyone see my screen? Take all of that away. Okay. Can yes, we can see it. All right. So we're going to start a little from chat markup. Sorry, we're starting a bit, a little behind schedule. You no, know, my network seems to be acting up. So all right. So I'm going to clean off all of this to be able to explain what I want to explain. So if you're a newbie, if you have if you if you're not a newbie and you're here, you know, just take it easy with the others, let me go through what I want to go through so that it can be easy for everybody. So there's something in Forex trading that, I, that is the most important, like the most basic of everything. Okay, let me say three things. It is support, resistance, and trend. That is the basis of everything that you might know in Forex. Support, resistance, and trend. That is the basic of basis of everything that has to do with forex. Everything, every every strategy you might know, every technique you might want to use, originated from the from the, from supports, resistance, and trend. Now, I said earlier that if you're new, if you're if you're if you're new, if you've been here before, just take it easy. Let me now. We, we, you would have heard several times that people say the market move in waves. The market does not go. The market goes like this. Then comes down. I hope, this is, I hope this can work as much as I want. Goes like this. Okay, I think I don't know about that. Comes down like this. And goes like this. Then comes back down. Sorry, that is not perfect. Comes back down. Okay, that is not as high as I want. Now, if you are looking at the market basically like this, what trend will you call this? Okay, it's, it's not it's not so perfect, but let's you guys you guys get the idea of what I want to do. Okay, I've not used this particular tool before. Okay, so what trend will you call this, guys? Forget the imperfection. Just look at the general. Of course, the market is not it's, it's not perfect too. So what trend will you call this? If you've been here for at least three weeks, I said three weeks. If you're here for one week, you should know what this is. 
Oh, my chat is running. Okay, this is an uptrend. Now, if we've been on go live, you'd have been scary. Some other people say you buy the roof of an uptrend. Basically, in the market, what we'll do is that now we've, we check the trend of the market. No matter the currency you want to trade, you check the trend of the market. Now, look at this GBPJ point that I'm on right now. This GBPJ point that I'm on. This is a five minute time frame. What trend are we right now? I don't want to complicate this. What trend are we right now? This is not this thing I'm drawing. I'm sure it's not the first time I've seen it. So I believe everybody has an idea of what I'm trying to see. So what trend are we right now? Who can tell me the trend this GJ is right now? Okay, uptrend, I believe the chat, my chat looks a bit slow. I don't know why my Zoom does that. Every time. Uptrend, all right, all right. It's going up, so it's an uptrend. Basically, it's an uptrend. Now, when you are in an uptrend and you want to, I'm trying to be make it as brief because it's not the major where we are here. But if you don't get this, you probably not get the whole, the whole picture. So I'm trying to just start from the basics as briefly as I can. By eight o'clock, we'll jump into the main thing. Now, when you are in, a, in an uptrending market, you want to buy the market. You are not looking to sell the market at any point in time. Well, for the advanced people, there are points where you can actually sell an uptrend, but the chances of the, your chances of winning a buy in an uptrend is higher than your chances of winning a sell in an uptrend because that takes a little bit of expertise, a little bit of you know knowing exactly what to do. Now. In an uptrend, you buy. In a downtrend, is there any currency that downtrend downtrend to? I think EU. Yeah, okay, not, okay, yeah, EU. EU, let me look for a strong downtrend. I think I saw something to play. Okay, so, okay. Okay, look at EJ right here. EJ, EJ, EJ is, Eurocard, Eurocard is what trend now. Eurocard is what trend. If you're looking at my chart right now, Eurocard is what trend. Let me show you the general chart. Eurocard is one, what trend? What trend we see Eurocard is right now? Okay, I'm not seeing the replies. It's a downtrend. If you look uptrend, I probably get what I'm looking at, but overall is in a downtrend. I mean, look at it. Look at look look at the way it's been coming. Can you see it? Overall is in a downtrend. Now this is where the beauty of HFX comes in, and part. Personally, I like to, because we are time-based traders on, in, in binary options in HFX, you want to, you want to, I prefer to use the five minutes time frame for my analysis. Now, there are situations, there are conditions where I go to the 15 minutes time frame. And I hope I, I, I remember to say that somebody should remind me toward the end of the meeting, why I will go to the 15 minutes and the one hour time frame. Please, in case I forget to talk about it, but we've not, right now yet, I don't want to jump what I'm saying. Now, just like I was saying, let's go back to our GJ. In an uptrend, you buy the market. And in a downtrend, you do what? You sell the market. Meaning in an uptrend, you look for buys. In a downtrend, you look for sales. That doesn't mean there will be a moment when there are sales. But your own issue is with buys, not with sales. Now, if we are saying, OK, I'm going to try and hide a part of this. I'm going to try and hide a part of this. Let's start from here. Now, if you want to mark up this chart, you know, this is not a full chart markup class. I'm just trying to go into, if I've, assuming I've not seen what, 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 has, what has happened, assuming I've not seen all of this, assuming this is where my chart was. Now, if I'm personally to mark up this chart and I want to get, now look at this, this, this I'm trying to use the right words so that doesn't look complicated to anyone. Now look at the way this market is going. All around there, it was ranging, ranging, ranging. Then all of a sudden, we have a break. We have a break here. Now, using that picture we did that time of the market going up, coming down, going up, coming down, going up, coming down. When you want to buy a market that's uptrending, you buy. Personally, I buy at the. You buy. That's not even personally. You buy at the last point of resistance that was broken. At the last point of resistance that were broken. Now, um, um, Dr. Joshua and Brandon Boy will tell you that you don't mark a single candle at the resistance point. You don't mark a single candle. There's a candle went up, another one come down. It's not a strong resistance yet. 
until you get further confirmations. And people always say the secret of the chat, the secret of the chat is always to the left, meaning what has happened before. Now, if as this market went like this, if I'm to pick a point, a point to buy this market, I'll probably mark it up here. Can everybody see this point? This was the last eye. This was the last eye before the market broke up here. Now I'm zooming with us in all of everything that's happened. So I'll probably put a line right here. Hmm? You can see we had a touch here. We had some touches around it here. It's not exact, but we had touches around it. Now, looking at the last point that was broken, I'll probably put another entry around here. Look at this point, guys. This was the last eye before this, before this went up. Probably put my, my line around this point too. I hope everybody can see it. Around this point. Now imagine, imagine I've not seen now. This gives me two entries right now. Two entries depending on other factors, which is in which is in in the strategy we'll talk about. I'm still going to come back to it, which is in by the strategy we want to want to train about. Now, I've not checked currency strength, I've not checked my strategy, but already I know that this market is in an uptrend and these are entry points for me. Now let's see if our oh wow. Sincerely, I did not even check this. Can you see what happened? The market went all the way up came back to our point, what did he do? He bought. Now, oh, I'm trying to hide it. I've already seen some parts, so don't let me. Now, if I'm to mark up this chart, he bought up here. Hmm? Now, at this point where he broke, where he broke right up here, where would my next entry be? I'll put my next entry here. Can you see? I'll put my next entry here because there is a touch here. There are several touches here. There are several touches before he broke it. Now, did this market particularly come there? No, not yet. But I can tell you that if GBP continues to be strong than JPY, this market, will, if, if it has not, I've not seen what, has, what is happening right now. If it has not, this market will still come to this one and buy. Now, but if you look at this, if, if you know how to, how to read the chart, based on your, based on your, based on your, based on the strategy we'll still talk about, look at this candle. When this candle broke, when this green candle broke at this point, this red candle actually came to the test. This red candle right there actually came to this test before it continued to move up. Now, that is another point. Now, at this point again, the candle broke, it broke right up, right? So where will, I, where will our next point of entry be? Our next point of entry will be right here. Based on, I'm talking, I'm talking about this break. This was the chart doing what it's doing, doing what it's doing, then it broke up. Now, automatically this resistance that I had there was broken and this resistance automatically becomes our support, our entry point. Now, what did the market do? It broke it. Look at this. Look at this green. <laughs> I wanted to touch my screen. <laughs> look at this green candle right here. This candle. It came back there. We tested it. Gave us an entry, and boom, you cleared the trade. Now remember, we've never checked currency strength at this point. You've not been putting other factors. Those are the factors that makes you a good binary trader. Now look at this. It just went up, came back, retested. Even if you didn't take this at the retest, because uh, just we always tell you that this is an immediate retest sometimes. Why not be the best retest? So you need the candle to move up and come back and retest. This is the clean, this is the best retest. Because it retested. This, this candle came below. But if I, even if I've entered that trade there for three minutes, for two minutes, with one or two rollovers, with two, one or two rollovers, we'll have cleared this trade. Because they came up, they came there, gave you a retest right there. The trade cleared. Can everybody see that? Can everybody now it came there, they tested it again at this point. Mm, maybe it didn't clear. Now this is where. Your strategy comes in. It has been respecting, respecting, respecting all this thing. But look at here. This did not respect. This is why you can't use only trading view for your trades. Somebody, so I know somebody that has said that, oh, I can't use trading view for my trade. This guy is making up a trading view. Because of moves like this, you have to be able to read it before it happens. This is why you cannot use trading view for your trade. And this is why strategy is important. If you had marked up this point as your entry, and you entered there, you would have lost. You continue rolling, 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 rolling. You didn't come up to the next 25 minutes. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, almost 30 minutes. You can see the next candle came there. They're not the test again. This is why you need the strategy to be able to know if this entry you marked up is correct or not. That is what confirms your strategy. Now, if you continue to mark up this chart, there was a break right here. There was a break, this move right here. Broke this candle here. That means this is our, this is our next entry point. What did it do? The candle came, the light candle came there. We tested it and went back up. You can see even here, you see came back, we tested the right here, and still went back up. You have to clear that trade. 
Can you see? Right now, another thing is happening in the market. This move, things like this, is why you need a strategy. It's why you need a strategy. Now, okay, sorry, let me, let me deactivate all these alarms so that they don't keep the stable Let me remove all these alarms. Please, please keep them Let me clear this alarms. Stop all. Okay. Now, if this market was in a downtrend, I believe you guys know what to do. I don't want to waste too much time on this. If this market was in a downtrend, if this market was in a downtrend, does, does anybody know what to do? Come on, I'm not getting messages in this chat. With what I've explained now, right now, with what I've explained right now, if you've gotten value from what I just explained right now, put some two in the chat. If you've gotten value from what I've just explained right now, put some two in the chat. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'm glad, and I'm glad there was no message in this chat until I asked. Wow, that means everybody's really listening. Now, look at this, our markup. Look at what just happened in the market right now. Look at what just happened in the market right now. This has not happened when we marked up this point. Now, even though the market broke this point after you have cleared this trade, you get what you'd have cleared this trade. That's why sometimes you don't take trades two times. You would have cleared this trade. Did the market come to our next point or it didn't come there? It came there. Can you see? It came there and rejected it. Can you see it? Guys, can you see how easy this is? Can you see how easy this is? This We've marked up this chart. We've marked it up right here before this move happened, right? Even though the market broke, broke this, our previous resistance, which we would have cleared the trade on. You can see we have cleared this trade. Look at what it did just now. Wow. If you caught an aha moment there, come on, put some, put some one in the chat. If you love what you are saying, put some one in the chat. If you love what you just saw now, put some one in the chat. Can you see what just happened right now? Can you guys see it? If that is a clean walk away, a clean walk away. Now I can tell you that if this market goes up like this, if this market goes up like this, if it doesn't break this point, if it doesn't break this point, we actually may probably depending on the factors our strategy will show us, hmm, confirm this entry and another, confirm this point and another entry. Depending on what our strategy will show us. Sorry guys, I have to take water there. Can you say clean work away? It doesn't matter, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes straight, you would have cleared it. Can you see that? You would have cleared it now. If you are to mark a downtrend, I didn't want to go into this before, but I believe everybody gets the idea now. If you are to mark a downtrend, oh, my real you this even marked. Now look at this, guys. I, I did not just mark this chart. No, I have to put this up again. I did not just mark this chart. I had this chart marked in the afternoon, maybe in the morning, maybe. Sometimes I don't even clean entries on my chart. Sometimes I don't clean my markup on my chart because for days, there are some pairs I have not touched for months. I just added them today because of this class. And I saw that the chart have had since, I think, November. The markup I had since November, the market was still respecting that. Now, look at this markup I have here. I did not just mark up this chart. Sincerely, you guys, I just went to Euro AUD. We've been on GJ. But look at what the market is doing to my markup. Look at what the market is doing. It got here. Did you respect? Yes. Did you respect? Yes. Did you respect? Yes. Did you respect it here? Did you, did you respect it? Look at what is happening right now in the market. I did not just, if, even though there's news, I, I think there's news around the o'clock right now. Even though there's news, see, look at what is happening. This is a clean sell. If you're, depending on what your, what your strategy has showed you, whether this is a buy position, whether this is a sell position, is why you need your strategy. It's why you cannot trade on trading view alone. You are not a Forex, you are not, we're not trading traditional Forex, we're trading binary. Binary, you need to be exact. The one thing that determines that time your success as a trader, whether in, in Forex as a whole, is your entries. Is your, if I go to another chart that I've marked up, let me see. I'm sure, let me see if there's any other pair. Come on, look at this. Look at the Euro, Euro GBP. I didn't just mark it up. Look at the respect. Look at the respect my entries have. I did not just mark them up. Can you see them? Let me go to the UD card. Okay, this one did not so much respect. Respect for some time before the news came out. Can you guys see that? I did not just mark up this chart. It's only GJ. Look at look at this UJ. Look at it. Look at that clean buy. Can you see? Look at that clean buy from here. Even if you have bought it from here, you would have just rolled over and you would have cleared. No, no. I don't think there was a name for rollover. 
If I go to any peer that I've marked up, you will see this thing respecting. Look at the low GBP. Can you guys see it? Even if I didn't mark up this chart, I just came to my chart and my, anal and my analysis confirms. Come on, I can just go from pair to pair. Look at AU. Basically, what I use to mark up my chart is what I just showed you. Look at it. If, even with news, even with news, look, they need perfect, perfect entry. Even with news, look at it. Look at that claim by. That's why the fact that there's news right now. You, of course, you don't remember there's news. Now, we're going to go to our strategy. We're going to go to our strategy right now. I will be teaching the hourglass strategy. Now, why do I love the hourglass strategy? Come on, guys. I've not got into time. Come on, Frank. Just calm down. We've not got into what's the best time to trade for two minutes or five minutes. Come on. Those questions are for later. We've never taught the class. Now, I'm going to go. I'm going to be teaching the hourglass strategy. The hourglass strategy is found on, on the hourglass platform. Simple. On the hourglass platform. But we have several strategies there. We have the market trap. We have um, some other strategies there. Now, personally, I used to be, everybody knows me. I used to be a cash trap person. I used to be a cash trap person, you know? I used to be a cash trap person. And this is not, now I'm going to say something right here, right? Now, before I get into what I want to say. If you have a strategy that's been working for you, if you have a strategy that's been working for you, this class is not meant to make you change that strategy. If Mamba has been working for you, stick with Mamba. If Market Trap has been working to you, stick with Market Trap. If iPad Drive is working to you, stick with iPad Drive. Now, but there's no knowledge lost trying to learn. Now, I'm going to say something. Number one reason why you might not be winning, why you might not be winning in Forex is because you hear our glass is working. You went to our glass. You hear Cash Trap is working. You run to Cash Trap. You hear uh, Mamba is working. You run to our Mamba. Hyper drive is working. You run to hyper drive. Now you need to pick a strategy and master the strategy. Now let me tell you the disadvantage of you not sticking with the strategy. By the time you are using a strategy repeatedly, you tend to know the limitations of that strategy. You tend to know what to look at that makes you want to stop that strategy. When I started to trade, to trade, I was a Delorean student. As in, till tomorrow, I, I still love the Delorean. It's still my best strategy. So tomorrow, I still love the DeLorean. Now, I studied the DeLorean, as in, if it says study, as in, I studied, I watched the video back to back to back. Every Sunday was for learning. Even if I don't have time for that day. Sometimes I don't sleep. I watched, I watched Tyron's favorites, Patrick Kenny's favorites. Now, I'm, I'm still able to somehow attach the DeLorean to my hourglass. That, this class is not meant for that. I'm not trying to tell you that if you know a strategy, Stick with it. Our glass will be the strategy for HFX. If I'm to jump back to Forex tomorrow, I'll probably go back to then go to Delorean because it's still it's still reading in my brain. Now, don't make the mistake of jumping from one strategy to another. Now, this is the hourglass glass on the IM platform. Now, I was trying to say something why I prefer the hourglass glass over maybe uh, market trap is that sometimes. You can see some five. I'm not trying to discredit market trap. Please don't get me wrong. A lot of people, we've had six figure traders in the team that uses market trap. I'm not trying to tell you why I personally prefer our glass. Is that how many of you have seen a five point trade on, on market trap go bad? Or if you've seen a five, a six point trade on our glass, not go the right way, as in not even go the right way, just continue. Going up, going opposite to, to your call. If you've seen it before, put some one in the chat. If you've seen a five, six point trade, go the wrong way on market trap. Nobody has seen it. Or is my chat not responding? If you've seen a five, six point trade, go the other way on market trap. Can you guys hear me? I can see my chat. My chat is not. Okay. Only Daramola Damlola is responding. It's only Damlola that has seen it. Okay. Okay, okay. Now, the, okay, all right, all right. I couldn't, my chat was not updated, so I thought you guys couldn't hear me. All right, if you've seen it go bad, that reason why it, go, why it went bad is what Hourglass seeks to eliminate. And if you know the people that created this Hourglass, oh my God, if not the people, they are master 
master master traders. I believe it was created by Josh Lee and Brandon Boyd. They are master. That was actually what made me what made me to jump on it. That if these two people say use this, I want to use it. You understand? If these two people say use this strategy, I want to make sure I'm using that strategy. Now, the hourglass is very similar to market trap. The hourglass is very similar to market trap. I mean, I need to write this. I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to. Okay, yeah. Okay. I need to have a clear screen there. Now, our glass is very similar to the market trap. Guys, please, we don't really want to listen. I, I made up my mind that I want this training to be to be practical, to be useful. That's why I started from the chart markup. Do you guys understand? Now, our glass is very similar, and I like the silence in the chat. Wow. The our glass is very similar to market trap in that the indicators are almost the same, except one indicator you see on market trap that is not here, and one indicator you will see on uh, on our glass that is different from the way it's showing a market trap. That is just different. So if you've known market trap before, this class will probably be easy easier for you. Now, what 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 are we what are we talking about? Market trap, uh, our glass. Sorry, I keep saying market. Market trap, our glass, as a couple of components. I'm going to break down the components as quickly as I can so that we can go back to the main so that we can go practical if possible. The time, time is going already. Now, before we start, I want to say something. Everywhere you see red, red on this chart, this whole thing you are saying, anything you see that is red means sell. Anything you see that is green means buy. Just like it is on our, on our brokers. If you click the red button, you are taking a put, which means you are selling. If you click the green button, you are taking a call, which means you are buying. It's as simple as that. Now, this red and green line you are seeing floating around here, this one, I'm referring to this and this, is called the Bollinger Band. You may want to write that down. It's called the Bollinger Band. Now, what does the Bollinger Band do? The Bollinger Band is like a rubber band that keeps price in check that keeps price in check. Now, anytime price gets to the red, what did you see? It came down. Anytime price got to the green, what did you see? It bought. Now, is that enough confirmation for you to sell or buy a trade? No. For every strategy you may, you may know, there's always what we call an, an, alignment, an alignment of confirmations. For every strategy in the world, the DeLorean levels, whatever strategy it might be, there's an alignment of confirmations that make, a, that make a strategy valid. An alignment of confirmations that make a strategy valid. Now, I'm going to try and collect the indicators on this hourglass and figure out what an alignment is. Now, everybody, this is actually supposed to start from. Look at this alert panel shown here. Of course, if you are here, you know what this is. ADCHF, that's the currency pair. That's what it is. I will not complicate that. AUDCHF, AUDJP, the currency pair. Now, you can see one number showing here, AUD 51, CHF 56. Now, the most important thing, the most important part of this, of this that you want to pay attention to, the most important thing that must correlate before you check any other thing is this currency strength. How does the currency strength correlate? When currency one, in this case, AUD, is higher than currency two, we are looking out for what? We are looking out for a buy. That means when one is higher than two, that means one is supposed to pull two up because one is the first one. Let's go, let's go basic like that. One is the first one. AUD is the first currency pair here. So for AUD CHF now, we're expecting AUD is more powerful than CHF. If we're using a swing, this student swing, I don't know the correct, this student swing, everybody knows what I'm saying. This student swing, don't form two, don't form two, two, two for me right here. If this student swing that somebody is on this side, somebody is on this side. If I'm sitting down on one side and my two-year-old girl and my four-year-old girl is sitting on the other side, would she be able to raise me up? 
Obviously, no, she won't be able to because my weight is more than our weight. That's basically what we are seeing here. So when AUD is AUD CHF, AUD is the first currency. CHF is, current, is the second currency. AUD is stronger than CHF. That means we expect the market to go towards AUD, which means we expect the market to buy, to, 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 to buy up, to go on a call. Now let's look for another one. I want to look for one that is different from each other. Wow, the coins, all the coins, all the currencies seems to be ranged. Okay, let's use USD card, for example. Look at USD card now. Card is stronger than USD. This is not the kind of strength I want to see, seriously. Sometimes you want to see, you can see how quickly that flipped. Card was 50, 54 when we got here. USD was 70, was 47. See how quickly that flipped. That's why sometimes you, have, you want to take trades. You should take trades, not sometimes. You should take trades that currency strength far from each other. I'm looking for one that we can use an example for a put. Seems all the first currencies are stronger now. Okay, let me just use, let me just find one that's fairly different. No, let's use USD card. Now look at USD card. Sorry guys. Look at USD card. Now it flipped again. Okay, now everybody realizes why I say take a currency as it's far from each other. Okay, let's use an NZD USD. USD is 46, NZD is 42. Which one is more powerful? Which one is more powerful? NZD, okay, now it's flipped. Okay, use it the way, the way I did initially. Okay, seesaw, somebody's giving me the correct English. Seesaw, okay, thank you. That's, that, that's a seesaw. That's a seesaw. Jangulova, okay, it's not the correct <laughs> Okay, I didn't see all of that before. Okay, USD card. Okay, sorry guys, yes, USD USD flip. So let me, I'm looking for a currency that the second one is stronger. Okay, I can't get one. But everybody gets the logic, right? If the second currency, all the currencies now, the first currency are stronger. I think that's because of the USD news. It's really, it's really influencing a, a, a lot of things. No, I need my phone. Make it to the Wi-Fi. Now, if the second currency is stronger than the first currency, that means the second currency will pull the first currency down. Is that clear to anyone? Now let me let me let me let me run a quick let's run a quick question. Now GBP CHF right here. What are we looking at for? GBP CHF. GBP is 57. I know this is fairly like repetition to some people, and you've heard it several times, but let's do it because of this is supposed to be a complete training. So let's assume everybody doesn't know. GBP CHF, what are we, what are we, what are we expecting? Buys, oh, GBP is stronger, so we are looking out for a buy, yeah. GBP is stronger, looking out for a buy, a call, yeah. So I believe everybody gets the concept behind that right now. I'm looking for one that's quicker, is an example. And okay, everybody gets the concept. Okay, yeah, so on just now. CHF JPY, 3326, what are we looking out for? JPY is 33, CHF is 26, what are we looking out for? What are you looking at for? You want to trade JJPY now, which you shouldn't because the currency pair is close. You leave it. No, I know, I know, I know. I avoid, yes, you should avoid it. That is the right answer. You avoid it. But I'm, I'm just using the numbers as an example. I'm using the numbers as an example. No, no, you should even leave it. If it's 2631, you should leave it. You shouldn't take that trade. I'm just using this as an example based on the number explanation that I said. Based on the number explanation that I sell, that, that I said. Now, some people are starting asking, why is this showing a call? Why is this showing a put? Now, this is a software. This is a software. Every five minutes, is must, it must give you a call. Every five minutes, it must give you a call. But you are a human being. Hmm? You are a human being. It's not left for you to know which, based on analysis, which is what we are discussing, based on confirmation, which is what we are discussing, which call you are looking, of course, if you say you're looking out for a call, I say they are showing a put. Why do you want to take a put? That's the essence of this currency strength you're talking about. That essence of the currency strength you're talking about. If you know you're looking out for a call, you're looking out for a call, even if it shows a put. That something is in an uptrend, does not mean it's going to, if it doesn't pull back, how do you get your entry? Is that, if you are looking out for a buy, it has to buy, give a pull back back to your entry before you now buy. If it doesn't form a red candle, if it doesn't sell, how do, how do you buy? But the fact is that sell is not your trade. They're waiting for you to give you your trade for you to take because you are looking out for a call. 
So you are looking up for it to give for it to give you that entry for you to take. Does, do everybody understand that? I do you know if it's for a sell or a buy. That's what I've been explaining since, guys. How do you know if it's for a sell or a buy? Come on, everybody, answer that question. How do you know if the currency pair is for a sell or a buy? Please answer that question. How do you know if the currency pair? Somebody is asking. Let me see is asking. How do you know? You probably, probably, maybe probably some, she, she joined us late. At price weight, yes. But use, use simpler English for all. Use simpler English. I understand what you mean. Yeah. When the first currency is out at the second. Let me see everybody has answered the question. When the first currency, no, I, I know. I don't want to use that word base or base currency or anything else I'm using. First currency, first currency, first currency. Come on, Frank, just listen to what I'm saying. I don't say you must. Oh, God. Okay. You will get it. Don't worry. Just, just, just listen. You will get it. Now, uh, I just caught me off guard there. I wish I can answer that question, but if I keep going back, I'm going to be here till a long time. Yeah, the strength must be different. As you know, let me see, you know if a call, if a trade is for a call or a buy based on the strength. Don't worry, this video is recorded, so you can watch again to get, if you miss any point, you can always watch again. It's recorded, you make the recording available. So you can always watch again. Now, that is the first part of this. I said, remember I told you that this hourglass has a couple of indicators that must align. Now, we know that, let's go back to GJ. What were you using before? GJ. GJ, right? We know that GJ now, we came, we, we came to GJ and we saw 59.30. GJ has only told us that I'm buying. Look out for a buy for me. Now, is this currency strength enough for us to buy? No, because we cannot just jump into the market anywhere. We need other indicators to align. The other indicators that we are still going to talk about to align. But the first thing you want to know is your currency strength to give you a direction. And GBP, JPY has told us that GBP is stronger than JPY. So we know the direction we're looking out for is for a buy. Now, that is number one thing. I've talked about the Bollinger Band before, so I won't go back to that. I've talked about the Bollinger Band before, that when price comes to the green, you're looking out for a buy. When price goes to the red, you're looking out for a sell. Based on what your currency strength has told you, I hope that is clear enough. Based on what your currency strength has told you, now that is number two indicator. We've talked about two indicators. Now, I'm going to talk briefly about this green line you are seeing here. This green line is called the RSI. The value does not matter. It's called the RSI. It's called the RSI, Relative Strength Indicator. Now, what this RSI does is that it shows you the overall direction of the market on this, on this chart. On our glide, it shows you the overall direction of the market. So, and I told you green is buy, red is sell. So, if you see it green, what does it automatically tell you? Automatically tell, even without you checking the chart, it automatically tells you that this market is in an uptrend. It automatically tells you that this market is in an uptrend because it's green. Look at it here. At some point, it changed to red. You can see it changed to red here because this market was in a downtrend. Can you see? If you see it red, it means the market is in a downtrend. Can you guys see? Then that you see it red, you can see it. When it was red there, the market was in an overall downtrend. Can you see? It was in an overall downtrend. But right now, it is green because the market has been in a strong uptrend. Now you guys see, because the market has been in a strong uptrend. When you see it green, it shows you that the market is in an uptrend. Now, that is another confirmation. On this GJ now, we know the market is in an uptrend. Now, what many confirmation have we gotten? Currency stretch is higher, one. Confirmation one for a buy. We're in an uptrend, confirmation two for a buy. Right? That is two confirmations now telling us that we should be buying this market. We should be buying this market. But now, this RSI, I will say something like this, this RSI, Shows you the overall direction of the trend, but it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily immediately confirm a trade for you. It just shows you that this market is buying. It's not the strongest indicator you want to rely on right here. Right? It's not the strongest indicator you want to rely on. Now, look at this. Who can, you can I hope everybody can see these small red and green lines. These small red lines and these small green lines. They're what we call support and resistance. Red meaning resistance, green meaning support. What is a resistance? A resistance is where price gets to and rejects, right? A support is where price gets to, drops to and shoots back up. Now, this support and resistance are automatically drawn. If I have questions, just hold on to the questions. I will address all the questions at the end of the class. So we don't keep going back, going back, going back, going back. 
Now, this support and resistance are automatically drawn on our glass. They're automatically provided on our glass. Now, remember what I told you when we were about to start this class, that everywhere you see a green, you're looking out for a buy. And everywhere you see a red, you're looking out for a sell. Now, GBBJPY has told us that we should look out for a buy based on currency strength, right? RSI has told us we should look out for a buy based on the fact that it is green, we're in an uptrend, right? Now, if we want to use this red and green, if we do this red and green, where are we expecting price to come to? Everybody, where are we expecting? I told you green is for buys, red is for sell. Where are we expecting price to come to? The red or the green? Green, oh, you guys are very smart. You guys are very smart. Green zone, very smart. Green zone, yeah, that's correct. You guys are very smart. The rest of price to come to the green. Now, the chat is a bit slow. I'm trying to. Okay, green. Now, we have how many confirmations? Three confirmations. We have three confirmations showing up. Now, it's not every time. Okay, now let, let me break down something here. You, you guys remember when we, were, when we were marking that chart? When I was marking chart at the beginning of this class, what did we do? I marked up the resistance that was broken, right? I marked up the resistance that was broken. When you are in an uptrend, when you, when you are in an uptrend, the previous resistance is your next support. Did anybody get that? The previous resistance is your next support. Now, there's a green line here. 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 If price keeps coming back down here, coming down here to go up, coming down back to this green to go up, will this market ever move? It will not move, it's a, it, it will be ranging. But at some point, it has to break through this thread. Let's use this as an example. Now look at when price broke through this thread. Look at when price broke through this red line. Look at when price broke through this red line, right? This red line, this red line, this is a bit, a bit advanced, you have to listen well. This red line, automatically becomes our next our next point of, of buying this market. Did it buy there? Can you guys see, did it buy there? Yes, it came there and it bought. Now price broke this red again. Price broke this red again. The price come back here. Yeah, it came around there, but there's a green here. That was, there's a green here. They want to respect this green. No, I, I didn't even mark that. Okay, this was supposed to be. Yeah, the price come back to that place when you broke it. Yes, because the market is trending up. You get it, what I'm saying? Because the market is trending up. So once it breaks a resistance, that resistance becomes the support. Let's go back and look and check for more. Look at it right here. Price broke this resistance. Price broke. This was the resistance. This was the last resistance, right? If you mark up this place, price broke this resistance. You can see it. Came back there. We tested it and went up, right? Kept ranging, ranging, ranging. There's no trade inside all these places. Well, there might be a trade inside these places. There might be a trade. And I will show you, as we are going, you will realize why there might be a trade inside this range. Why there might, the confirmation that shows you there's a trade, I will tell you. Now, let's continue marking it up. Does that mean I ignore the green and just mark the red? No, I'm not saying ignore the greens and just mark the red. There's a particular confirmation that tells you what to look out for, and we are going there gradually. That's why you don't want to miss any moment of this class. The eight people that left this class, where did they go to? The eight people, come on, go and drop messages on the group that there is space now. And if there are people looking for space, guys, go and drop message on the group and let people know there is space now. Come on, I'm going to wait for two minutes. Go and drop message on the group and let people know that there is space. People that have been trying to join, Drop message on the group and let people know that there is space. I'm waiting to see the message. My phone is right here in my hand. Drop message on this group and let people know that there is space now. Let people know that there is space. Those that have been trying to join, let people know that there is space. Let people know that there is space. Yeah, let people know that there is space. Now we must return back to 100. Let people know that there is space. Let people know that there is space. But we're going to continue so we don't get distracted with that. Now, now look at price broke this red, came back there, we won our trade. Came back around there. Well, maybe we'll roll this over. We want it, you know. But we, I've told you we need an alignment of indicators, and I've only told you about four indicators now. So you guys need to calm down and say, ah, but this thing's got to calm down. We'll get to where the indicators are now. That will show you which part, how, which, 
how, how and when each of this each of these entries is right, right? Now, I've told you about currency strength as your major indicator, major thing that shows you direction. I've showed you, I've told you the RSI that tells you an uptrend or a downtrend. I've showed you the Bollinger Bands, right? I've showed you support and resistance. Now, let's go to the most important part of this. I want to hide this. No. Okay, yeah. Now, look at these two indicators down here. This first indicator up here, this first one is called the stochastic. Now, this is where you really want to listen well because these two indicators, these two indicators are your most important indicators. If you've not been listening, maybe you've been eating, you've been watching the movie with one eye, you've been watching whatever show is on, you're on Netflix, please stop that Netflix here and just listen to this, right? And just listen to this. Now, this is called the RSI. This is called the RSI, right? Oh, did I call this the RSI that time? Oh, that is a mistake. Did I call this the RSI? That's what, don't realize I said the wrong thing. This is an EMA. It's not the, an RSI, sorry. This is an EMA. You know, it gets so used to the term. It gets to an exponential moving average. It's not the RSI. This green line is not the RSI, it's an EMA, the exponential moving average. So whatever you've heard Miss RSI for this, call it the EMA. So if you've written it, I can change it now. It's called the EMA. Sorry, I made a mistake on that. It's called the EMA, not the RSI, exponential moving average. I think it's the 50 EMA or something, but you don't need that. It's called the EMA. Now, this down here, these two parts is called, this one, it's called the R, the stochastic, okay, let's see. <laughs> It's called the stochastic. This is called the stochastic, right? This first indicator you are seeing up here with the green and the red line is called the stochastic. Now, whenever you see the stochastic at the red, okay, now let me, let, me, let me not start from there. Let me start from this one below so that nobody gets confused. This indicator you are seeing down here is called the RSI. It's called the RSI, the relative strength indicator. This one down here, I call this up one, this up one is called stochastic. This one below is called the RSI, but I would like to start from the one below so that it doesn't get confusing for anyone. Now, what does the RSI shows you? The RSI shows you what the market is doing at the moment. What do I mean? Whenever, now listen to this, this is the, this is the most powerful thing about the hourglass. This is the most powerful thing about the hourglass. And this is what gives it that edge by my definition in my books. This is what giving it gives it that edge over the market trap. Because this is the reason why you see some six-point trade on market trap, market traps sometimes, and you and you still lose them. This is the reason. Now, whenever you see the stochastic below this gray line, whenever you see the stochastic, whenever you see the RSI below this gray line. It tells you that the market is selling. Whenever you see the RSI above this green line, it tells you that the market is buying. Now, how far above or how far below it, it is on this RSI, it shows you the strength of that buy or the strength of that sell. Now, if you've heard market trap, RSI at the green, so at the green, you want to rub that off your brain here. That's what we're talking about. On the hourglass, how far below the gray line the RSI is indicates how strong the cell is. How far above the gray line the RSI is indicates how strong the buy is. And this is the strongest as, after the after the uh, after the currency strength, this is the second. Do I even call it second? This is the strongest indicator on the hourglass because it can tell you when not to enter that trade, even though the market is coming to resistance. Now, this is where you need to listen. Even though the market is coming to resistance, even though the market is coming to support to buy or the resistance to buy, this tells you 
that the buy is not, if RSI is below here right now, assuming this is our RSI, let me move, let me, let me move it other you guys. I'm talking about this right now. I moved this so you can see it clearly. Now you can see we, we already know GBP JPY is for a buy, right? Well, this is CGJ. We already know GBP JPY is for a buy, right? In this case, if you want to buy the market, this RSI must be above this gray line. Does everyone understand that? This RSI must be above this gray line, must be above. It must not be, preferably it should not be around it. It should be above it. Something like what you can see around here. I can tell you under that 1%, yeah? If you take a buy at the right entry with this, you win that trade. If you take a buy hmm, with this around here, you will win that trade. Now, remember I just told you, currency strength, I told you you are looking at for a buy, right? Now, the next thing you look at for your currency strength is your RSI. Where is the position of my RSI? Just like it is in Mamba. That's this is why I said, if you know a strategy still originate from the same thing. If you want to trade your Mamba, your RSI must be above 50. The same thing is what we are saying here. Now, look at what is that. Look, let's use the live market right now. Let's use the right, the right market right now. Look at this. We are looking at for a buy, right? But look at what is happening right now. RSI came below. RSI came below the 50. We, G, 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 GBP is this strong now. Can you see? Oh, God. Oh, this is too beautiful. GPP is this stronger, right? Okay. Let me clean off all of this so that you guys can see why this is powerful. GBP is this stronger, right? GBP is this stronger than JPY. But look at RSI. It's below the 50. And look at what that trade is doing. Is it buying? It might still buy you, but is it buying right now? Guys, look at what that trade is. Even though it's a four-point score, even though it's a four point, is this market buying? Oh, let me let me let me let me show you guys something. Is this market buying immediately? Even though it's a four point score. Yeah, it's going back to a buy now because GBP is way strong. Even though it's a four point score, did that market drop or not? Can you guys see? Because our RSI is below the 50. So you don't want to take this trade immediately. Now, this is where trading is patience. It's not buying immediately, it dropped. And you can see GBP is still strong out. The currency strength is support. Now you can see GBP is losing strength. RSI has already told you that this thing is coming below. Don't hold on, hold on, hold on. And you can see GBP is stronger. Price is at price is at the green. But did it buy? No, it's not buying yet. It's still dropping. You can see it's not buying yet, it's still dropping because your RSI is super powerful to tell you that this market is going to a selling market. Now, when do I look to buy this market now? If I want to buy this market, I just patiently wait. If quality trend is in support, I just patiently wait for my, and, and I like to hide this so that. If, when do I want to buy this market? But Coach Femi, now, GBP is us to buy when GBP is stronger. GBP is stronger. Why will I not buy this market? Because RSI is below the 50. If you check our glass right now, let, let's come. If you go to the market, you probably see a five point. On GJ. Let's go to GJ on market trap. You probably see a five point, but the market is not is, is not buying. Look at it. <laughs> you are seeing a five points now, but the market is not buying immediately. And I'm sure it would have probably given you a five point around there. It has broke that resistance that I took with that resistance. You can see it's issuing a five point right now, but the market is not buying immediately. Now listen to me. I'm not saying market trap is not is bad. Six-figure traders are on our team that are using market trap. This is why you have to find a strategy and stick with it. They're using market trap because they know where to avoid some trade. They've used it enough to know where to avoid the trade, right? Now, let's go back. Let's go back to our glass, sorry. Let's go back to our hourglass. Oh, my markup should have cleared up, okay. Now let's go back. Now, I would want to buy this trade when, when this, I will give, I will give you people a, a little trick when you can still buy, but let me just teach the strategy first. I'll show you a little trick when you still valid, when you, now you will know if this, if this entry is valid. You know, it came to a green and it's buy right now. 
why he bought at this point, I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys the trick. I'll show you guys the trick. Now, if, whenever this, this strategy is designed for the five minutes, so let's take the five minutes, right? And you can see market trap will still have won there. Market trap two is I would have won. But there's no strategy that is not good. I'm just telling you why I like this over that. Market trap will still have won that trade. You can see, you called it out, you rolled it over, three minutes trade, you rolled it over, and you'd have still won that trade. Can you see? So you can see that there's no strategy that is better than the other. It doesn't matter what you choose to look at. Now, I will now wait for this RSI to go back above this 50 for me to be able to buy this trade. That is why, why I tell you that, but I will not tell you guys now because some people are going to get it mixed up. I will not tell you guys now. People are going to get it. Stick with this. That, see, there are 1 million and 1 PS here. No 1 million and 1. There are a lot of PS right here. You don't need to stress yourself on a pair that is not aligned because you want to take it by force. If it's not aligned, go to another one. You see another one that's aligned. Go look for another one and take it. Right? Go look for another one and take it. Now, I've told you, you want RSI to be above the 50 if you are looking out for a buy and below, above the gray line. If you are looking out for a buy, that gray line is 50. You can see it here. In the letter, we call it the stationary 50. Now, you want RSI to be above the gray line if you are buying and below the gray line if you are selling. Mark that. Currency strength must show you. You can see the struggle. You can see the struggle happening in that trade. That struggle is because of this. RSI, this market wants to weaken out a little. The sellers are trying to push it down a little. The buyers are rejecting. That's how you see it. It will maybe probably, if you are taking that trade, be going in and out, in and out of profit. You get. There's a trade I called this afternoon that, that we lost. I think Euro card, some people cleared it, but I think I know some people lost it. Now, this is the reason why that trade went like that. You can see immediately we lost that trade. The trade, after some five minutes, the trade shot straight down, right? It went above our entry because at that entry where I called, I think we were, we were on a live class actually, I would have changed the entry. I think it was also, I would have changed that entry because RSI was slightly below the 50. That's why we lost that trade. RSI was slightly below the 50. The moment we went above, that trade shot straight down. That's what happened to that trade. I think I actually did a double up for that trade and I cleared it. But when you are sending trade, you can't call double ups because many people will not see it on time. You get now look at the struggle on this trade. TPP is stronger. Normally it should be shooting up, boom, 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 boom. But it's struggling because RSI is below. I'm hammering on this RSI because it is the most important part of this of this strategy. Policy strength and RSI is most important of this. Now, if RSI is now above the 50. I'm going to take an example. If RSI is not above the 50, does that mean I click every candle that come out? No. Because RSI, is above the, RSI was above the 50 all through here. RSI was above the 50 all through here, but you can see some red candles, right? How do you know when to take the right trade when RSI is above the 50 and quality strength and support? Now, you take the right trade when stochastic, listen to me now, when stochastic comes down to the green for a buy. When stochastic crosses, crosses below, touches anyone, anyone based on where your, where your support or resistance is. Right, guys, let me make that simpler. One, I, 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 I'm just opening my, my hourglass. I came to GJ. GBP is stronger than JPY. I know I'm looking out for a buy, point one. I look at my RSI. RSI is below the 50. Okay, so I'll wait for RSI to go above the 50, right? But assuming we, go, we enter this market, I want to look for where it aligns. Let's, let's assume we can see all, all of, all of what, what is happening now, right? This is when I came, this zone, this place here. Let me mark it up. This place here. Let's assume this is where we were. This is when I opened my hourglass, right? This zone here. Was when I opened my hourglass, right? That zone here was when I opened my hourglass. Hold on, I want to change this. Okay. That zone there was when I opened my hourglass, right? I opened the I saw GJ stronger than GBP stronger than JPY. And I'm looking out for a buy. And I see my, my RSI above the 50. Right? So I know that the buy is solid. Now, how do I get the right entry? Your right entry comes when this stochastic, this to, remember I told you green are for buys. When this stochastic pulls down to this green line. Now, RSI is above the 50. Currency strength is stronger. Now, yours you will just wait for. Is for this stochastic 
to come to the green while RSI is above the 50. What do I mean? Let's find trades that are aligned. What? Stochastics came down right, right here, right? Look at it right here. Look at this point right here. Okay, let me use our markup. Look at this point right here. And everybody see this point, I'll clean it up. So can, I'm talking about this point right here. At that point, RS, uh, Stochastic came, be, came for below our green. Let me maximize it. Stochastic came below our green. RSI, okay, was slightly above you. Okay, let's say it wasn't ready yet. Even if you are thinking it was ready, if, if you're not using it, you will know it was ready because you would have seen other things. Now, uh, at this point, RSI above the 50, Stochastic, Stochastic came to the green. Okay, this was the point, yeah. RSI was above the 50. Stochastic came to the green. Now, look at our indicators. There are indicators aligned here. There are greens aligned. There are greens aligned. Currency strength showed us, number one. GBP is stronger. Uh, RSI told us that is above. The buy is good, right? Now, look at our, our candle now came to a green line. Even if it has not drawn this one, let's assume you even use this green. Let's assume you even use this green here. Let's assume you even use this. Let's assume this one has not showed up. Yeah, so, I, so this is the green we saw. So I using this green. Did that trade clear or not? Come on, guys, look, look, look at this candle. Look at this candle. If you take it at the entry, 251, did this trade clear or not? So Cassie came down. RSI is above. RSI is above. Did this trade clear or not? Come on, I'm waiting for replies, guys. I'm waiting for replies. Did this trade clear or not? I believe you guys are replied. I don't know why. Did it clear or not? Yeah, it cleared. Now, let's look. RSI is still above the 50, right? So the trade is still good. But what are we waiting for? Why didn't we take all these candles? Why didn't we take all these candles? Why? Because at that, those points, why didn't we take all these candles? Because as at this point, hmm? as at this point, our stochastic, our stochastic has not given us confirmation. Now, this is the beauty of of our glass, of the of this RSI. Look at how this buy. Even if no matter where you are, look at how this buy kept going. As long as this RSI is above here, it's going to keep going up. Now, this is not to say you click every candle bar. You click every candle bar. You must be your entry determines what you get, right? Now, what what do you wait for? You wait for where would our next entry have been? Our next entry would have been right here. Right here, where this stochastic, can you see? Did we align here? So, uh, stochastic came below the green, right? RSI above the 50, trade came to our green line. Did you win that trade? Did you win that trade? Now let's even, let's even assume that that green had not showed up. And what I was telling you before, Let's assume that we can see that price broke this red line, right? Price broke this red. Let's assume we had we had the line marked up here. Let's assume we even marked this place up. Okay, let me let me remove this. Let's assume we marked this green line. I don't show, right? Let's assume we presume that. Assume to according to what I told you, the price in the beginning, price broke here, right? So this you know this is your next entry. So yeah, but this entry is only valid if stochastic and RSI align. Now look at it at this point. Did they align? And that this candle that I had this week, did they align? Yes. RSI, stochastic came below the green. RSI above the 50. Did you clear this trade? Even if I enter at 452, it just came below. It just quick below. It went back straight up. Did you clear the trade, guys? Sorry, I had to hide my, my chart so that I can see the screen clearly. Did you clear that trade? Did you clear the second trade now? Only on one page. Did you clear the second trade? It aligned again. Yes, I cleared it. Can you guys see that? Can you see this beauty? Now let's go forward. Let's look for another alignment. Let's look for another alignment. Let's look for another alignment. Now look at, uh, we have another alignment right here. Now, I'm, I'm not, at, at this point where I'm picking, sincerely, I'm not even looking at what, what is happening up. I'm just looking at what happened around these two. This line is me putting, I used to put it before I look up. Now look at it right here. Look at it here. Hmm? At, RSI above the 50. So Cassie came to the green. Did you clear that trade? <laughs> did you clear that trade? Guys, did you clear that trade again? So how many zero have you done right now? How many zero have you done? 
three zero. That's a three zero trade right there. Did we clear that trade again? Did we clear that trade again? <laughs> that is what three zero. Two minutes, three minutes, five minutes. Doesn't even matter what you use. You have cleared the trade. Personally, I use two minutes fixed time. You get. I use two minutes fixed time personally. So three minutes is fine. Three minutes fixed time off is fine. Two minutes fixed time on is fine. Three minutes fixed time on is fine. It just depends on what what suits you. Now, let's look. After this point, now guys, look at this. I'm going to clear up all of that. After this point, hmm, the moment our RSI came below the 50, what do you do? You ignore. You ignore. Now look look, look at look at the point we ignored. Oh, this is beautiful. Look at the point where we ignored because RSI came below, right? So Kasi came below, right? But we can see RSI is trying to come below the 50. Would we have cleared this trade? If they are taking this trade, would you have cleared it? There was an alignment, right? RSI came, so Kasi came to the green. But you can see RSI is coming below. Would you have cleared this trade? Would you have cleared it? For a buy, remember we are looking at for a buy. Would you have cleared that trade? No, can you see? You wouldn't have cleared that trade. You wouldn't have cleared that. Why would you not clear it? Currency strength is still good, remember? Hmm? But our RSI showed us that no, 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 no. Hold off, hold off, hold off, hold off. The market want to sell a little. The market want to sell a little. The market want to sell a little. Now let's look for. Did you get under alignment after that? Now let's look whether we got another alignment. RSI. Is below here, right? RSI, look at it. Stokasi came below, right? Stokasi came below, right? But look at the position of our RSI. Is this trade? Look at the position of our RSI. Is this trade valid? Would you have cleared that trade? Even though Stokasi came below, even though GBP is stronger, would you have cleared this trade? This next trade, would you have cleared it? Sorry, my chat is not looking. I'm, I have to wait for it to pick up before I. RSI is now above. So yes, we don't have cleared that trade. Now let's look for where RSI now came above again. Now look, look at look at this point. Look at this. Even though RSI is briefly above, I would have ignored this trade, Shah. Maybe I would have taken it because I know that's to look at. Even though RSI is briefly above, even with that briefly above, did this trade clear or not? With on, on, on even with that briefly above, did this trade clear or not? I see. It's not really above yet. RSI did not align. So guys, did not align. So let's say we ignore that one. Now look at the point. Can you see that GJ trade that time? That the trade would have lost. Yes, maybe you'd have rolled it over. Your rollover would have caught when it came here. You see, I have like two minutes left, and you would have, would have came back down. Why did it come back down? Why did it come back down? Look at what our RSI is doing here. Is GJ is GBP still stronger right now? GBP is still stronger. GBP is still stronger. But look at it. The market did not buy at all these points. Okay, maybe only this one. With that, why I said I would not, I would not tell you guys why, 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 why I would have taken that. But it's not the best trade. When the moment RSI came below, what did it do? Even though GBP is stronger, it kept dropping. It kept dropping. It kept now. Look at what are you waiting for now? As a smart guy that you are, as a smart and patient person that you are, you are simply waiting for. Even though GBP is stronger than JPY, you know the market should be buying. But you know, Oga, you, can, you cannot deceive me. GBP is not yet ready. This currency is not yet ready to buy. He wants to retrace. This RSI shows you retracement. He wants to retrace. He's not yet ready, Joe. I'm waiting. Now, what are you waiting for? As a smart person, you are waiting for RSI to come back above. I'm waiting for our RSI to play above here. And you know, RS stochastic aligns again, and boom, you take your trade. But right now, it hasn't aligned. So I'm just looking at GJ. Okay, GJ, keep playing. DJ keep playing. Even though you have a markup here, now this work. Even though you know that, even though you know that price broke this resistance, this last resistance. The moment price came back there, you know that this RSI is not ready. So you know that resistance is not valid. That entry is not valid, right? Even though price came back there, yet you know the entry is not valid because RSI is below. Now let's assume, but Coach Femi, we are just lucky with this one. Come on, I know somebody saying mm, all these people go. They will just find. Well, I didn't even have a particular payment I wanted to use. I just picked DJ at random because that was also my chat. Because that was also was on my chat when I when I opened my trading view. No, no, no. You wouldn't have. You would have. 
this trade you would, you would have struggled because the entry would have been here. You would have struggled, but you don't need. Let's RSI align. Yeah, you'd have claimed, but that is not aligned. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, Daramala. I get the point you're talking about. Yeah, that point has passed. Now, somebody is saying, but we are just lucky. I beg of that. Show us another example, Joe. We are just lucky. All these things are just calling, calling. You just have to look for one pair that is good and you are calling. Okay. Somebody mentioned a pair in the chat. Anybody, just mention a pair in the chat. A pair you want us to check. Anybody, just give us a random pair in the chat. Somebody just got a random pair. Let's assume I'm lucky. I'm lucky with GJ. So somebody just call random pair in the chat. I'm waiting. The first pair I see, what I will take? ADCHF. Okay. That I will see. ADCHF is never my favorite pair. But I will, I will use. See, these two pairs you mentioned. I don't even go. I don't, I don't, I don't like using them. Not that there's nothing. So let's go to ADCHF. Okay. ADCHF, would you trade it with this strength? Would you trade it with this strength? Would you trade ADCHF with this strength? Now, you know this market is a bit late. I really shouldn't be trading around this time. Would you trade ADCHF with this trend? No, we wouldn't trade it. But now, let's even look at the places that ADCHF aligned, right? Right now, at this moment, we wouldn't take it. But let's look at the places where, I know AD, AD has been relatively strong. CHF has been weak throughout today. I know CHF has been weak throughout today. So I'm going to use ADCHF. ADCHF but right now, Right now, we wouldn't trade ADCHF. I know at this point, you can see how strong that uptrend was. So obviously, at this point, you can see how strong. So obviously, say AGAUD was strong, right? So let's assume, now this is an assumption. Nobody should quote me on this. We are assuming this is where we made the market. This is where we made the market, right? And AUD was stronger than CHF, which I know it was. And at this time of the day, because I was in the market around that time. So I know it was stronger, right? Now, let's look for alignment. AUD is stronger than CHF. Now, don't look at it right now, please. Nobody should. Okay, maybe we should look for a pair. Okay. Okay, let me use AUD as an example. Then we'll go to, a, to a live, go to the live market and see what we can get. AUD is stronger than AUD is stronger than let's assume at this point, at this all of this point, AUD was stronger than CHF. What do we do? We all these places, would you take the trade? No, we wouldn't take because RSI is below. But look at this point where RSI came above. Look at this point. Oh my God, this is beautiful. Look at this point where RSI was above. Look at how bullish that buy was. Look at how bully that was. Look at how bullish it was. Now, what do we look for? Hmm? Hey, this one got than CHF, right? I know it was at this point of view because CHF has been relatively weak. Hey, this one got than CHF. We're waiting for stochastic to align, right? We know RSI is already below. Boom. Stochastic aligned here. Stochastic aligned here. Stochastic aligned right there. Did you clear that trade, guys? Stochastic came below. Okay, this is around where it came below. Okay, let's let's even use that. Let's even use that as an example. This is around where that trade came below. This is where it came below, right? You would have probably rolled this trade. It took three minutes trade. You entered here. Two rollovers would have been six minutes, and you'd have cleared this trade. Can you see? Stochastic. This is the right point. I mean, personally, this is the right point I've taken that trade, Sha. This is the right point. But let's assume you even took it here. Let me not be extremely, let me not claim to be extremely perfect. Sometimes our fingers are just itchy, right? Look at it. Did, it. did we clear that trade? The moment RSI came below, did we clear that trade? Boom. You take it three minutes, it came below. You, roll, you might have even cleared it when it went up before it came down. You know? Because even this candle had a week. That means the candle went back up. Because even this candle had a week. That means the candle touched it. It probably would have cleared even before. And this would have even have been another entry for you. If, if, if you are taking this trade and you cleared, this would have been another entry. Because you can see your uh, RSI is still far above. Stochastic came below. And this would have been another entry. Even if you are cleared this short term, even if you are still in this one, you could have entered again here. Yeah. At the close, at the close. Now, personally, I like to enter trade sometimes at close of country. I like to let the country, because sometimes you are not perfect. The market pushed below that entry. Sometimes I like to wait for candles to close. And I take it at the opening of the next candle. You get sometimes I like to do that. Now, that one, did you clear that trade? Yes. Now, let's look for another one. RSI above, 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 and stochastic came below here. Yeah. All right, RSI above, 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 stochastic came below here. Yeah. Did you clear that trade? ADCH, I'm never looking at the guy's response. Did you clear that trade when it came to the, to the support? Yes. And look at that support. What, what did that what did that green match up with? It matched up with this point where the market broke. The market broke this point. 
So we just waited for the market to come back there. And at the point when it came back, our RSI at the Kataka line, and boom, we took the trade. We think it's stronger. Did you clear it? Yes. Now, look at this point. Look at this point. AUDC is stronger. Look at this point. RSI came below. Yeah, it came back to that same point again. And we know stochastic is, RSI is still above. Stochastic came below again. What did we do? The next candle is blue. We cleared the trade. Can you guys see how easy this is? Now, at this point, now, this you have to be smart. Look at how the stochastic move from here hmm, to here to here. You can see the stochastic is gradually losing strength, right? You can see it's gradually losing strength. So at this point, you want to calm down. You can see this, this is what we call divergence. The candle is closing. Okay, it's closing higher, but RSI is coming lower, right? Now look at it. This is, this is, this is why you, will, you would not have had this next trade. Even though it cleared, even though it cleared, right? But RSI is below. There are many other trades. Don't, don't take a trade that doubts him. If I have one reason, to, if I have five confirmations for a trade and I have one that what is not to take it, I will not take that trade because of that one, even though the five aligned. Right now, let's look at it again. RSI came below here. Yeah? We didn't take it, even though it cleared that, that was not our trade, right? Look at it. RSI went back above. RSI went back above. Stochastic came below. Did you clear that next? Did you clear that trade? Absolutely, you did. Can you see? Now, look at this point now. Look at what happened there. Our RSI came below. And what do you do? You stay off. Even if you, even though Stochastic came, uh, even though Stochastic kept coming below. Can you see? Even though Stochastic kept coming below, telling you that to buy, telling you to buy. Mm -mm. Our RSI is telling me it's not ready. Can you guys see? Now let's go to the live. Let's use the USD right now. Is USD is valid. Oh, this is beautiful. Anytime I see this thing work out, I'm just so glad. I'm, I'm not looking at the chat. Let me just finish explaining this then. I'll look at the chat briefly then. Move on from there. AUD USD. AUD USD right now, what are we looking out for? AUD USD, what are we looking out for, guys? AUD USD. Let me bring my chat back. AUD US, what are we looking out for? I don't know whether you guys are responding on my chat. AUD US, we're looking out for a sale, right? That is beautiful. Let me see if anybody. So I got to deceive us, yes. Okay, we should play small. Oh, yeah, now. Frank, yeah, let's play now. What do we do? Play small. Frank, we kind of play. Do you want to play? So we should go and do Django Lover. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay, let's play small. Let's laugh small. Let's laugh small. I have a song I like to play when I'm, but because we're recording this, I don't want to play the song. I'll play it at the end. So that's something that gives me gives me in the mood. You guys know where why why it keeps me in the mood. It's a song I like to listen to. Anytime I'm trading or I lost a trade. It's actually a song I play for myself. Hmm? I'll show you guys, I'll tell you guys the song later. So I remind myself who I am. Mind myself who I am. It's not I'm not who God says I am. Not, God, I'm, I'm who God says I am. There's no time best. Take, trust me, guys. There are times not to take trade. Hmm? There are times if currency strength are the same thing, you don't take the trade. You don't what the currency pair the same thing. I told you, even if it's close, even if it's not the same thing, 28, 26, avoid the trade. But look at the UDUSD now, 77, 23. That's a trade to take. 38, 28, you don't take it. 51, 56, 21, you can take that. You get, you get I'm trying to say, when they are too close, 47, 40, avoid it. There are many other things to trade. Why do you want to take the one that is too close? 79, 38, these are trades you want to look out for, right? 77, 51, those are things you want to look out for, right? Not 25, 21, not 30, 20. You, you guys get that. Look for currency pay that, that are wider apart. It gives you a higher chance of winning, right? Now, um, okay, we're looking at AUD USD, right? I don't want us to miss that. Now, AUD USD, I don't know why this chart went. Okay, let me refresh. I think I did something. Okay. Okay, it's looking better. Now, AUD USD. What are we looking at for? We're looking at for sales, right? AUD USD, we're looking at for sales. Oh my God, this is beautiful. Look at AUD. USD is stronger right now, right? And look at what this market did. 
Hmm. Beautiful. RSI is below from here, right? RSI is below from right here, right? I don't know when exactly USD became stronger. So I don't, we're going to assume it was stronger around here. Hmm? Now for a sell, what do you wait for? You wait for your stochastic to come to the red line, right? And sell. Wait for your stochastic to come to the red with RSI below, just the inverse of the, of the confirmation. For a sell, now you want to write it down. For a sell, RSI must be below the gray line and stochastic must be at the, at the red. For a buy, RSI must be above the green line, and stochastic must be, well, RSI must be above the green line, and stochastic must be at the green, right? Look at how far down this thing so just by RSI being below, right? These are, I believe, well, sometimes this RSI would have moved, yeah? sometimes this move that I move, it, I believe it would have been here at this point, particularly, because it has moved. No RSI follows the candle. Because it has moved, that's why this one dropped. But look at it. There was a confirmation there. I took that trade and you play it. Even if you didn't take that one, you took this one again. You took it when it pushed up. Obviously, for this candle to be for this week to be up here, this RSI pushed up. And because it's from the week, that's why this RSI. And at this point, I believe and I know that this RSI pushed up. Right now, look at it. Did it clear? Super clear. Right now, what are you waiting for? RSI is below already. For you the US right now, what are you waiting for? They're waiting for stochastic to come up here. RSI already below. It shows us the sell is good. They're waiting for stochastic to come up here. Then you take your sell. If RSI is below, you take your sell, right? If I'm if I'm to take this trade, I'll probably do my markup because this candle just broke this point. I'll put an entry here. Hmm? Then I'll put an entry. I'll put an entry here. Probably maybe here where, where it makes the strong break. That's far away, actually. With this currency trading, it should not get there. They'll probably put an entry at the top of this. Now, at any of these three entries, where my RSI comes here is where I will take that trade. At any of this, now, if you know how to mark up on trading view, just like I did now, you know, the value, I think they've done it the way that the value is closer now to our broker. They changed the, the, the data feed to our glass. This is why that I see this other trade here. They change the point just to be uh, KOT four X. I think they change. So I think these entries are closer to our to our broker now. But if you don't want, just go to your broker. That's how you get your entries. These are entries now. What somebody says, what are my entries? Now this this candle is coming here, but obviously my stochastic will not be ready. So this entry is not valid. But if you get to two fifty four and stochastic is above here, what do I do? I take the sell with currency strength in support. Right now. There's a little magic, eh? guys. With this, with the way this, with the way this RSI is way below here, I'm not saying you should do this. Maybe I shouldn't even say it. With the way this RSI is below, below here, you can still take a low risk trade right here and see clear it. Because this RSI, the far be, how far below it is, we can see that. How far below it is here tells you that this cell is very strong. You get, but if you're a patient to that, which you should be, you can wait for it to pull up here. But you can see it has touched that 134 right now. You can see it touched it. It touched it and it dropped because of the strength. But I'm not saying you should take that because our indicators is not aligned. As so the did not come up, right? So this might be a bit of a struggle. But with this strength of this currency, 79.14, and uh, RSI below here, I will take this trade here. Personally, I will take this trade here. With this different, oh, look at, look at, look at that beauty. <laughs> look at that beauty dropping right now. Look at that beauty. Look at that beauty. With this trend, this is 8390. Because of this far difference in strength, I, I wish I was trading. This was a good trade for, to, put some, to put some good money on, man. But I'll drop some good money on that. With this difference in currency strength, I would have taken this trade at this entry because of this RSI. Look at how far the RSI is from the 50, right? And look at this strength. Look at, I would have taken 134. Let me, let's see, did you get 134? Did you get a 134? I think I haven't had the markup. Wow, guys, look at look at the beauty of markup. You guys can say I wasn't checking it. Look at 134. Oh God. 134 was marked up already. I wasn't even checking this chart. And I, you guys say I didn't just mark it up. This 134 is probably a result of one entry far, 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 far below. But the marketers will always do the same. Look at it here. This is probably the point I marked up it. I marked it up. Look at it. The market always repeats itself. Look at what, what happened here. This entry here, what is it? What is respected right here again? 
You guys saw me say 134, and I didn't even check. And I didn't even check my trading view. But look at 134 on trading view. I already have it marked up. Look at 134. Look at that trade is dropping. Come on. Let me see some excitement in the chat for this. Come on, you guys should excite me. It excites me. Look at that beauty of a trade. Look at that beauty of a trade. It came to 134 and it dropped. And it dropped. Look at that. 134 to 039. Come on, that trade. That trade there eh, is not coming back. <laughs> that trade is not coming back. <laughs> that trade is not coming back. Look at this. I didn't even check this chart. It has, it's marked up. Look at how it's expected all these entries. Look at it. 303 dropped. Hmm? Went back up. I had 303 marked up. It came down, retested it, dropped. This one broke. Okay, there's no entry. This one broke. I marked 205. I guess this, this entry will mark down. The other one would have been 205. Okay, it was 254. Okay. Look at it. Came down, retested it. Boom, dropped. Can you guys see this beauty? Can you see this beauty? If I'm excited about what you're saying, if you're excited about what you're saying, put some one in the chat. Come on. If you're excited, you're seeing this. Put some, but I'm not saying you should take trades that did not get. Your, 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 uh, uh, your stochastic must align. I just told you guys the reason why I would take that trade. Because look at that difference in strength. Obviously, you know that trade is not coming back here anytime soon. Look at that difference in strength. 80 to 11. It's not coming back there. Take it from the next, from the resistance that just broke and take it away from there. This is the resistance that just broke. Take it away from there. Because of that, look at how deep. Come on. I told you the further away it is, the further away from the RSI, from the 50, the further away it is from the 50, the stronger the sell. Look at how far away it is. And, and it was complemented by currency strength. Look at it. You just want, just clear that trade. Clean and clear. Now, um, um, our our Agla has given us a markup here. No, did they give us that? Let me refresh it. Okay, that was a glitch. Come on, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. EDUSD. Look at it. Now, our RSI will now come and align. Probably, they probably align at this point and give us another sell, 254. That was what we marked up before. If, if, if currency strength is still stronger, when this trade gets to 254 and stochastic is at the rate, take that trade. Mm -mm, hear me well, guys. When this pair gets to 254, you can, no, it's wrong. Don't take the trade. This past night. Please don't take the trade. This is past time. There's a lot of manipulation right now. So don't take the trade, but it's a good trade. But I must, I must teach you the right thing. So don't take the trade. Hmm? Now look at it. If our RSI, our stochastic now is trying to come to our line, you can see. Our stochastic is trying to come. If this stochastic gets here, eh, nothing will make this trade not to drop. With this currency strength and this RSI below. Of course, RSI will still be below. RSI will still be below. Hmm? RSI will still be below. You can see that, guys. You can see that. If you get to 254 and stochastic gets to this trade, it will drop. This is live example. This is a live example, guys. This is a live example. So I believe I've been able to do justice to this. If you have questions, now it's time for questions. If you have questions, please drop your questions in the chat straight away. Drop your questions in the chat if you have questions. <laughs> Some people are watching, waiting for 254. It's little trade though. <laughs> Come on, we have questions, guys. Nobody has questions. Nobody has questions. Questions, questions, questions. What the time is it means to trade? No, nothing. You know, there is a belief. There is a belief that, okay, when is the best time to trade? We answer. Somebody said, when the time is the best. There's a, there's a general belief that when you are trading on the five minutes chart, the market tends to react for the first three minutes. Then, goes against for the next, for the end of that five minutes candle. So basically what I would advise you is to trade between, anywhere between three things, three minutes fixed time on. If it's too much for you, use three minutes fixed time off or two minutes fixed time off, fixed time on. What I will use is two minutes fixed time on, three minutes fixed time on, or three minutes fixed time off. You get, I will not use anything lesser than two minutes for a trade. And I will not use, I mean, I will not wish to use anything higher than three minutes for the trade, right? I will either use three minutes fixed time on, three minutes fixed time off, or two minutes fixed time on. 
Now, somebody said when is the best time to trade? Now, I would say there is no best time to trade, but there is a time not, there is a time that's not advisable not to trade. Somebody took a, you can you imagine? <laughs> Somebody took that. You kept the 134 again and it dro dropped the game. Come on. We are, we are teaching. Somebody's opening. Somebody's busy opening uh, the opening the broker. Get the 134 again and drop. Somebody's busy opening broker. No, guys, I'm not seeing. Okay, let me see. Please, what happens with price difference in our broker? Yeah. What line? Okay, let me let me. Okay, I was asking a question. When is the best time to trade? I was saying that there is no best time to trade. There is a time not to trade. When is the time not to trade? When the market is about to close, like around the time we are now, right? Why is it not? Does the market stop moving? No, the market does not stop moving. But there's something we call spread. There's something we call spread. When the, I think the market closes by eleven now because of the time of one hour addition. There's something we, when it is eleven o'clock, guys. Go to your meta trader four, meta trader five. Check how wide the margin between your, your red and your green line, your ask and your buy line, your ask and your bid price. There's something we call spread, which is what the broker takes from a trade. Now, by the time is around that time, by the time is around the, when, the market, when the market closes, you will see that that's, that thing will widen up. And now HFX broker, you will not see it, but actually there. So if you check the price on trading view, then I check the price on your broker, you see the margin will be wide. Until maybe it's around 1 a.m. when the market regulates itself. Oh my God, look at that trade dropping again. Do you guys understand what I said? I hope I've answered that question. When is the best time to trade? Let me see. I'm waiting for my chat to load up. When is the best time to trade? Uh, what line should stochastic be on for a buy? Every green is a buy, every red is a sell. You get so your stochastic must be at the green for a buy, RSI below 50, RSI below the green. Let me say that again. Anita, stochastic must be at the at the green, at the red, sorry, at the green. Come on, don't, don't get me confused. Stochastic must be at the green for a buy hmm? and RSI below the 50 for a buy. That means RSI is below here. And currency strength must support. Currency strength must support. Don't trade that is below and is below. The currency strength must support. Currency strength must support. The currency strength is what first tells you the direction to look out for trade. You understand? The currency strength is what is the first thing that tells you the direction to look out for trade. I believe I've answered that. Please, what happens with price difference in our broker? Okay. If you want to, if you want to, I believe our class has been made to be very close with the broker now. It was just happened. You can see that it's correct. Let me see. You can see that it's correct, but what you can do, what you can do if you don't know what to do is that you can use trading view. How do you use trading view? You can just pick, look at, okay, if I want to pick this point now on my chart, what basically what you can do is this. You can look at where the market is presently. Hmm? You can look at where the market is presently and look at where your own market is. The market is at 987 now. You guys can see it. It's at 987 now, 983 now. Our glass is at, oh, I missed that. Our glass is at 984, market is at 991. That means we have about seven, six point difference. So whatever value you get on our glass, you can add that difference to it. You understand? I'm talking about the USD, 991 now on our glass and, nine, and, zero, and 998 on trading view. That's about six points, you can add six points. That's about six point difference. So that means if I'm taking, uh, zero, if I'm taking 254 on, uh, which one is there? Which one was I just now? Is it trading view? Okay, 986 to, okay, uh, trading view is higher. That is whatever entry you are taking here, you add six points to it. For every pair, you can just be like, or if you want to get your entry perfectly, what you can do is also that you can pick where this, where this line are. Just look at the candle. Okay, let's see, you want to pick this, let me delete this. Let's want to pick this now. Look at where this red line is. I can see it's below, is below this, is just above this red candle, right? So I just go to my to my trading view, look for that red candle. Oh, let me move this screen down to that. It's just after this red, you can see where it is here. I just trace it out above the blue 
above the red. So I just go to my trading view and I look for that same candle, which I believe is this was this candle. So you just put it here. That's your entry, 266. That means 254 here is 256 here. It's 266 here. Do you guys understand what I did? So just take copy those entries. Look at the candle they are on. If you want to pick this green now, it's below this red line, right? If you want to pick this green, it's at the week of this trade. What you do, go to your trading view. This is the red. You can pick this, and that is it. Can you guys see that? And that is it. That means 171 here is one. No, no, no. That, that, that can't be correct. 131 here. No, no, that can't be correct. That can't be correct. That difference is too much. Below the blue week. Okay, did I pick the right candle? Okay, I think there's a little difference in the way it appears. But you guys, but you guys get it, right? That's the way it works. You guys, okay, 134. Yeah, that this is it. 134. Yeah, that's it. 134. That is 144. Yeah. 127. Yeah. Yeah. That's correct. So do you guys see that? Let me see questions, questions, questions. I'm waiting for my Hey, you clear. How do we know best expression time? Leave an answer that. Now an educator call a trade and call a zone while you are using AccuSend. Okay, they will tell you the zone. They, sometimes when an educator call a trade, they call it, they tell you to use plus or minus five, right? So it's left for you to know the exact place to enter. But because of regulations, that, 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 they can't tell you the exact number. You know, you want the academy to be around for a long time. So that, that they can't tell you the exact number. But most times they will just listen. Most times they will stylishly say it. You get, so you know it. How do we know the entry prior? I believe I've answered that. Please explain call score. Okay, the call score just tells you that how many of the indicators are aligned, right? So what, when you want to take, you need a call score of four and above. This call you're seeing here tells you how many indicators are aligned, right? So you need, if you're looking, for you do your now, you're looking for a put, right? They want this call to be around four. You get, you want this call to be around four. Four and above is good, right? That's what the call score is. That's what the score is. Hmm. Somebody is busy taking. I will see you after the meeting. Build a picture. I will see you. We are training. You are taking trade at me. RSI below or above the green for a buy. No, no, no. Don't, don't complicate it. RSI, <coughs> RSI must, RSI, <coughs> don't complicate this guy. RSI, the one below is the RSI. RSI must be above the gray line. This one above is stochastic. You get, if you don't get it, watch this video again. Maybe I had a slip of tongue at some point. Watch this video again. For a buy, RSI must be above the gray line, gray. RSI must be above the gray line and stochastic must be at the green line for a buy. For a sell, RSI must be RSI must be below the gray line and stochastic must be at the red for a sell. So best time not to trade is from 11 p.m. Yeah, you can say that, you can see that. Yeah, you are, you are right, you can say that. One thing we need to know is to use this hourglass for editing and drawing lines. Frank, are you new? There's no line you want to draw. The line is there automatically. This support and resistance line are there. They are there automatically. Just pick the last one you see. Based on based on what, 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 what you're looking out for, right? Control what I do, what do I do to the fear of taking trade? I end up saying then you have to take the trade. There's nothing you can do. Take the trade. Don't over leverage. No one thing that makes us scared of taking trade is because you over leverage. If you have a, if you have a one thousand dollar account, for example, and you want to take a twenty dollar trade, you will not be scared to take that trade. Okay. If you're not sure, we used to say that if you're just learning, use one percent, use one percent of your account per trade. Let's assume you have $1,000. 1% of $1,000 is just $10. If you don't over leverage, you will not be scared to take that trade. You will not be scared to lose $10 out of, out of $1,000 or $1 out of $100. You will not be scared. Just take the trade. Or then you take five trades and you see that you won the trade, your confidence will go up to use 2%. But then you win tomorrow, your confidence will go up to use 3%. Do you get it? If it's below four call score, well, you can take it depending on the, on the indicators. Depending on, please come again with RSI. Okay, this is my beautiful sister asking. So I'll come again. RSI 
must be below the gray line for your cell to be valid and above the gray line for a buy to be valid. Please, Modi said, please come again with us. Okay, I've answered that. Please, there be a replay. Yes, there is a recording. Coach Benaya, I think we can stop the recording now. Coach Benaya, if you are here with us, I think we can stop the recording.